One man who is seeking to lead the All Progressives Congress, the APC, into the 2023 general election, amongst other contenders, is the current Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, who is also a former Governor of Benue State and former Minority Leader of the Senate, George Akume. He joins us now in the studio. Very warm welcome, Honorable Minister. Or which one do I use, Your Excellency or both? <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone? Well, just uh, to start on a very light note. Now, let's begin with your desire uh, to head or lead the APC into the 2023 general election. You've been mentioned in several quarters as a consensus candidate. Uh, but how would you describe the process so far with despite the uncertainties or with the uncertainties well uh, <laughs> thank you very much uh, politics itself is a game that is full of uncertainties it's not just about uh, a particular party that is preparing and very seriously to to hold uh, its own convention uh, this is not the first time of uh, a party having a kind of false start in its uh, attempt to do a convention. I was um, um, a foundation member of the PDP and I recall that uh, after the departure of uh, Chief uh, Solomon La, who had to postpone the, uh, the convention for two days uh, for obvious reasons which I may not want to go into now. Uh, having said that, uh, the postponement, if at all it is coming, it's uh, very much part of the game. He said that we're not going to do the convention, we're going to do the convention. Uh, are we out of sync uh, with the provisions of the law? We are not. And so we are fully prepared to do the needful. I understand because the INEC is going to hold uh, uh, some elections, uh, by-elections on the 26th of, uh, of this month. And therefore, uh, they would be too occupied, uh, perhaps, to uh, monitor very closely uh, what was going to take place uh, within the confines of the convention of the APC. Don't forget the fact that this is a huge political movement, the biggest political party in Africa, with a total registered membership of over 42 million people. It is not a vainglorious statement. This has been authenticated by our own photographs. It gives legitimacy to what I am saying. Uh, the other party tried it to do what we did. They couldn't. Twice they failed. So, so, so it is obvious that the convention or the Congress, the convention won't hold on the 26th of February from your submission? From my submission I would say that if it doesn't hold on the 26th, it is not unusual. It has happened before in the past. And therefore, what I said is, if there is the need to shift, no doubt uh, the, the uh, planning committee of the, of the party will do that, and uh, it is still within the confines of the law. We have not broken any law. And uh, I am full of uh, optimism that at the end of the day, we are going to hold a convention that is going to be free and fair. Uh, it's not going to be... Uh, anything that is done under the table. Is but, but the youths of your party are very restive about the postponement of this convention. That has been postponed several times and Mr. President has directed that February 26th is sacrosanct. Are you going against? Will the committee be going against the orders of the leader of the party, President Buhari? The leader of the party remains the president of our country and uh, what he says uh, it's uh, almost like uh, law, but uh, no law is uh, uh, is as sacrosanct as uh, two books uh, that we have on earth. Uh, we could make adjustment, and that does not mean that uh, we are undermining. They are undermining the integrity, authority of Mr. President, who is the leader of the party. No, but uh, as I have said, you see. Uh, Everything is subject to, uh, to adjustment. Uh, the only thing you don't adjust, you don't tamper with, is the Bible and the Quran. Uh, these are sacrosanct, uh, but uh, these other things could be regarded as mere construct. All we are trying to do is to give effect 
to what Mr. President has done. I'm not part of the planning committee. But if, there is, if they have this abiding, uh, abiding need to, uh, to push it forward and it gets the approval of, the, of Mr. President, so be it. Okay, so be it. Let's uh, look at you. You wear a mask, I would say. You know, Two-Face, you've been in the opposition, People's Democratic Party as a foundation member, and now you are with the APC. What are your thoughts about the North south rotation of power is this something you support well i i would want to put it uh, this way that uh, power has always uh, shifted in this country yeah you recall after the collapse of the first republic uh, uh, military took over but in 1979 this country started a presidential system of government and uh, there was another intervention and President Shagari was overthrown. But in effectively, we could say that uh, President Shagari handed over, has handed over to uh, uh, Chief uh, Olusegun Obasanjo from the South. Shagari was from the North, democratically elected under our presidential democracy. He handed over to Chief Obafemi Awolo, oh, sorry, to uh, Chief Shagari. Olusegun. Shagari handed over to Chief Olusegun. Um, or Lushegun or Basanjo rather or handed Basanjo. over to Shagari no, in 79? No, that, that is not what I'm saying. Okay. Shagari was democratically elected. Absolutely. If there was no intervention, he would have spent eight years. Yeah. There was a broken chain there. The chain was broken. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, under normal circumstances, one could say with some form of certainty that that democratic government, which was overthrown, was at the same time determined to hand over power to the South. Whatever the circumstances, with the return of the country to presidential democracy again, in 1999, power shifted to the South. And therefore, I'm saying that technically, the man who started the presidential system of government shifted this power to Chief Olusegun Obasanjo in the South. I say technically. Okay. Now, having spent eight years, power again shifted. Uh, to the north, where Yaradua, President Yaradua was expected, all things being equal, to spend uh, eight years. Unfortunately, he spent only two as uh, death snatched him. Unfortunately, death snatched him. So, power moved to the south. President Jonathan was there for uh, six, six years, years plus, yeah. plus. And then power shifted again to the north where we have President uh, uh, Buhari. Buhari, Muhammad Buhari at the helm of affairs. And therefore, the issue of power shift can always be settled by the political parties. Recently, I think this week or so, no, last week, our junior partners were in Ghana, uh, the PDP were in Ghana, to settle themselves with respect to power shift. So I believe the parties are capable of sorting out the issue or power shift. Fantastic uh, submission there. You believe in power shift. So when power shifts to the south, will you support an Igbo president, the southeast presidency? Let me see. I, I, I think you are, <laughs> I would say, <laughs> you seem to be putting some words into my mouth. What I'm saying is this, that the power parties are capable rotation. Of, you, yes. You've just talked said about rotation, the parties, which is the agreeable. Parties, yes. yes, the parties are capable of sorting out this. Mm. Whenever the party takes a decision, I abide by the decision. If you become if the chairman of APC, yeah. George Akume, will you support your party as the APC chairman to support a Southeast presidency candidate for the president? Well, it's not uh, George Akume. I have fantastic friends amongst the Igbos, the Southeasterners. I have fantastic friends. They have talented people and uh, they are very patriotic, uh, they're hardworking. If the party decides that the next president should go to the South, the party decides that in the South it should go to the Southeast, I will support. If it suppose that it should go to South South, I will still support. If it decides that it should go to Southwest, I will support. It depends on the position of the party. I am not saying that if I become uh, the chairman of the party, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I will be guided by what uh, the party decides.
but quite frankly, I am at home with everybody, uh, every part of this country, and I love this country, and I know I have friends from the Southeast and so on, who also love this country. All right, uh, we'll continue the conversation when we return. Conversation with George Akume, President Minister, Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs. Do stay with us. We'll be back. You're welcome back and you're still watching News Night. We're reaching you live from Nigeria's capital, Abuja. I am Christian Ogono. I say I have with me in the studios the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, a former senator, two-time governor of Benue State, George Akume. Let's continue the conversation. Um, this time, let's shift away from the issue of uh, rotation of the presidency and if you support a Southeast uh, presidency. But as we approach 2023 and as a cabinet member, how would you assess the performance of President Buhari in uh, almost seven years of his administration? If you have to score him. Yep. Um, scoring my boss. But I, I, I will score him very high. But I will give a background uh, as high narrative. As 89. I will come back to that. This present government came into being amidst lightning, thunder and, thunder and rain. It was in a state of flux. The whole situation in this country was in a state of flux. Not only that, there was a state of anomie. The Boko Haram had taken possession of large swaths of land in the Northeast. They were killing they were destroying as if we didn't have a government in place. That was banditry. Arm robbers were everywhere. Has the situation changed now? It has. But let me give you this more story before I answer your question because it's very topical. Okay. Now, economy was tottering to a collapse. This was the background when the present administration came into office on the 29th of May, 2015. Government of uh, President Buhari quickly took charge. They formulated the economic growth and recovery plan, the economic recovery and growth plan, which was transparently, transparently and professionally implemented to pull us out of recession. This country went into recession. By the time President Buhari took over, salaries were being owed, pensions were in arrears, gratuities were uh, pending. Spread across the three tiers of government, local government, state and federal, they had to come out with a way to settle this mess. And that was when you started hearing about budgetary support to states to clear these uh, outstanding uh, payments, same thing to local governments, and even at the national level. We exited the recession to the surprise and acclaim, paradoxically, of International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and other international institutions. They were surprised at the performance of the government of Muhammad Buhari. Not only that, we started growing, the economy started growing at 3.4 percent. Would have been there, but for the road intervention of COVID-19, which threw Spana in the works. It's not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. In spite of that, you could see massive interventions in the area of infrastructure, which was completely neglected. It was a kind of planned offensive against infrastructural deficit in this country. You could see some of the roads. You would say, yes, some, some roads are still not under construction, but most of these roads, trunk A roads are under construction. They are pipeline projects. I'll give you an example from here to 
Kefi, from Abuja to Kefi, Lafia, Makodi, can graduate, it will get to the ninth mile. See the type of work that is taking place on that road. Same thing from here through from Abuja, Kaduna, Zaria, to Kano, Ibadan, sorry, Lagos, Ibadan, far away to go to the far north again. And then, of course, from Potakot through Enugu and so on across the country. You're not talking. Putos, you're, you're not talking from the Benin bypass to the east-west road through it is Benin, part of the Sapele, lot. Wari, uh, Patani, and Bomadi. East, the east-west road is under construction. Nothing is happening between it, Benin, Wari, Ugeli, I was Sapele, the minister, um, I was Benin a, to Asaba. I was a host. Oh, sorry, I was a guest of the minister of Niger Delta. I could see what is also happening on these roads. I want us to be very realistic. To say nothing is happening is to deny a statement of fact. When you see things, you know. This construction of roads can never be completed in two years. It depends on the size of on the length of the road, the quality of materials you are using. And these are highly rated contractors who are working on these roads. The same thing is applicable to the rail transportation sector. Nobody heard about uh, trains again in this country for decades, until recently. Lagos, Ibadan, through yeah, uh, Abeokuta. And then, of course, it's going to the north. Okay, and these are areas where I believe we shouldn't just take for granted. Look at the power sector. By the time we took over, the country returned to presidential democracy in 1999. The total output of power in this country was about 3,000 megawatts. Massive infusion of funds into that sector was intended to bring at least 6,000 megawatts of power to the national grid by 2007. It never happened. We were still hovering around 3,500, 3,000 to 3,500, until this government came into power. Today we say it is 12%, uh, 12,000, but the power that is available is 7,000. And now we are strengthening the transmission lines to ensure that more power is evacuated and distributed to the people of this country. You can see that tangible things are happening. Okay, let's uh, quickly, let us quickly look at the issues of uh, poverty alleviation. The president, uh, I think about two years ago, thereabout, promised to take 100 million Nigerians, half of the population, mm -hmm. out of poverty in 10 years. Has he really done that with uh, the 5,000 Naira being distributed to the poor of the poorest? Where would that go? Well, I'm happy you have said two years ago he made that statement. You didn't say 10 years ago. So it is just the beginning, two years ago out of 10. But the statistics I have may be different from what you have. The interventions of this government for the purpose of poverty eradication or reduction is monumental and most unprecedented in the history of this country. Interventions, whether in the area of agriculture, in, the, uh, in agriculture, you are talking about education, you are talking about health, you are talking about power, you are talking about most of this. Whether you are talking about SIP, which is just a special purpose vehicle to reduce poverty. What was the minimum wage in this country before he took over? 18,000. He moved it to 30,000. And the unemployed were placed on 30,000 per, per month, which is not a small amount of money to pay to someone who has nothing to do. And at the same time, people are being trained through these various key acquisition centers that are scattered around the country to improve on what they, so that they can hold their own. If I begin to read out this intervention, there are over 48. Some are designed for the benefit of the youth, some for women, for the underprivileged. You talk about 5,000, this project this program was also applauded by the World Bank. This 5,000 that they give to the poorest or poor, to the poorest or poor. Over 42 million people have been impacted through these various intervention programs. 
and they have been lifted to. If you look at the way power is now generated through solar and distributed to our people, again, over 7 million homes have been affected. When you take power to people, you also improve their lot. You also improve their lot, and they're not on the grid. You improve their lot. No. So, so when you talk of this, in the area of agriculture, Uncle Borrower scheme alone has generated massive employment of over 32 million people. Uncle Borrower scheme alone. Nigerians are making money. There is no that I can have people who are making money. There are other, because the emphasis is not on agriculture. This diversification thing the government has been talking about. I have a friend in Makwadi. He has a processing facility. For Benny Seed, you need to see what he's doing. People are encouraged to go into agriculture and they are reaping these dividends of their investment in that sector. Today, if you say a bag of uh, fertilizer costs five, 5,000, it is because of the intervention of the president through presidential initiative on fertilizer, revamping existing facilities, the blending plants, and bringing in critical input to be used in these facilities, producing fertilizer and selling the fertilizer at affordable prices to the Nigerian farmers. These are okay. things I say that are unprecedented. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Minister, let, uh, before we let you go, let's go back again to national politics. And I want to bring you back uh, to the issue of rotational presidency between the North and the South of this country. It's there immemorial, as some Nigerians would say. It's been there for decades now, as you reel it out. Will Anakume's chairmanship of the APC, which is already zoned to the North Central, be supporting a Southeast presidency? Because it will become obvious. Once your convention holds, and an Akume emerges chairman from the north, then obviously the south should produce the president in APC, the presidency, a presidential candidate from APC. Well, thank you again. Uh, you seems to be you seem to be so <laughs> fixated on this issue, but I want to make this comment, which I try to put across, but perhaps he never quite got out well. I am a strong party man. I believe, and strongly too, in the supremacy of the party. And Nakume as chairman alone cannot take a decision. But I believe that when Nakume takes over, you can still call Nakume here as party chairman talking to you with more authority. But don't forget that we believe in the supremacy of the power. Our party believes that all Nigerians are equal. We create equal opportunities for all Nigerians. That is one of the aims and objectives of this party. So we don't discriminate against anybody, against any part of this country, because all the segments of this country make up our country. And not only that, okay. they are part and parcel of the APC. Okay. I told you, our junior partners went to Ghana. They came, they came okay. by, okay. They came by the, empty, uh, empty handed. handed. <laughs> okay. okay, very quickly, very quickly now, will you support a consensus chairmanship candidate in your party? Whatever the party decides is acceptable to me. If the consensus candidate is George Akume, fine. If it is uh, any of my friends, who are contesting, fine. I, the same thing is applicable to presidential candidate. Whoever the party chooses is good. All right. Uh, I want to, at this point, thank you most fervently for being a guest on Newsnight. George Akume, two-time governor of Benue State, former senator, 
and uh, presently the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs. Thanks for coming on Newsnight.